Father, he's a good, good, good God. Wonderful Savior, marvelous Redeemer. Marvelous, marvelous. Yes, he is. Welcome on board this morning. For if you're joining us for the very first time, welcome on board to Mana, Mana in the morning. Mana, bread of heaven, bread of heaven. Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. It is through and by the Spirit of God the victory is won. We run through troops and leaps over wall. The victory comes to the child of God through and by the Spirit of God. And David cried and said, O Lord God, take not, take not thy Holy Spirit away from me. And David understood it was the Spirit of the Lord moving upon him that caused him to slay giants. To kill lions and bears, he understood it. It was the spirit of the living minutes after the hour. It's manna in the morning. Awesome, awesome, marvelous, wonderful. He's an awesome God. Yes, he is. Get ready for the word in three minutes. Three minutes in three minutes time from now. I am going to minister to you the word of the Lord. Antichrist disciples strategically placed. Strategically placed. Strategically positioned. I am going to give you. Oh, the name of God. What the Lord has laid on my heart to say to you this morning, this is very serious. This message I'm about to teach this morning is very, very serious. As a matter of fact, we're going to have to get ourselves into a prayerful mood. The devil does not like this kind of teaching and preaching I'm about to do this morning. No, you're busy. Maybe you're getting yourself together for your work or for school or wherever. But I really, really, for whatever amount of time you are able to spend with me this morning, please. And if you can't get to listen to us for the whole entire time because you got to go for work or wherever, please catch it. The video, the video broadcast of this on YouTube, all right? It'll be on YouTube. Type my name up in there on YouTube a little, little bit later on when you find the time. Pastor Howard Palmer and the title of the video is going to be Antichrist Disciples Strategically Placed. Antichrist Disciples Strategically Placed. We give the Lord praise and we give him glory. Thank God for the songs of Zion that is there to help us in our walk with God. I'll read from 1 John chapter 2 verse 18. 1 John 2 verse 18 says... Little children, it is the last time. And as he have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that this is the last time. I read it one more time. So little children, it is the last time. And as he have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time. It is the last time. We mean last days. The last days of human existence. That's what the prophet is saying here. The, the apostle John is saying to us here. We know that it is the last time, the last days. And it has been said that many antichrists shall come. And even now, there are many antichrists. And whereby we know that it is the last time. All right, so John is talking about the ending of time, the last days and the ending of time. And he's basically saying in his teachings that 
the spirit of the Antichrist will, ri will rise up in the last days. That's what he's saying. The spirit of Antichrist is going to rise up in the last days. Antichrist means anti the anointed one because the word Christ or the name Christ means the anointing. Antichrist means against. The word anti means against. Anti anointing. They are against the anointing. They are against the anointed one and his anointing. That's, that's, that's explicitly what the word Antichrist means. Against the anointed one. The word A-N-T-I means against. Christ means the anointed one. So Antichrist means against the anointed one. Antichrist means against the anointed one. Against the anointed ones. His disciples. So anybody who has the anointing of Jesus Christ in your life. The Antichrist spirit is going to oppose you. You're going to be opposed by the Antichrist spirit. And Jesus said it is already in the world. It's already in the world. He said many Antichrists. Let me read it again. The first part of it. Little children, it is the last time, as you have heard, that Antichrist shall come, in, shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists. So John is saying, even now there are many Antichrists. Now you must understand this. What is he talking about? He's saying that Antichrist or Antichrist will be one main person. There's going to be one main man who will carry that title of Antichrist. Son of perdition. The Bible talks about him. The man of sin, son of perdition. You see, he, he, there will be a man that comes on the stage. That he will be the devil in the flesh. That man will be Antichrist. But, but in the meantime, the Bible said there are many Antichrists in the world. What is he talking about? He's talking about the people who are in a league with the devil. In league with the Antichrist spirit or the Antichrist vision. And they have embraced Antichrist in their lives already. In other words, they have made a conscious decision to go against Christ. They are people in the world right now who have made a conscious, not unconscious, conscious decision to be against Christ. They are against him. And the Bible said there are many of these such people that are in the world today. See? So, so I entitle it as Antichrist disciple because if the Bible says many Antichrists and he's speaking about people who have accepted the vision of the Antichrist or have accepted the, the mindset of the Antichrist, that qualifies you now to become a disciple, a follower of Antichrist. So even as we are speaking this morning, there are people today, many of them, who have already embraced the mindset of Antichrist. And that make them disciples of Antichrist. And they are active in the world system right now, putting up bars and barriers to block everything or hinder everything that has to do with the Lord Jesus Christ. They are opposers of the Lord Jesus Christ. And everything that God is for, they are against. And everything that God is against, they are for. These are people that are right now alive in the world today. And Satan is their master. And he is the one that, uh, that, that bring them about. He is the one that deceived them. He is the one that lied to them. He is the one that converted them. Yes, they are converted. They are converted from, dark, from light to darkness. The Bible said in Isaiah, when they knew good to do good, they do it in that. The Bible said they call light darkness and call darkness light. See, when they knew good to do it, they do it in that. And so they, were, they have been turned over to a reprobate mind. And they are working gleefully as agents of hell, agents of devils, agents of the demon, agents of the powers of darkness. And these people are being strategically placed in various parts of society. Watch me. For the purpose of opposing the Lord Jesus Christ. Opposing Almighty God. Opposing the Word of God. They are strategically placed. Satan is strategically 
placed these people in the world system. The, the, the word, W-O-R-L-D, world, it means system. That's what it means. It's a system. See, when we talk about the universe now, we're talking about the creation of God, the mountains and the oceans and the sea and all that stuff and the trees and the birds. And we're talking about the thing that God created and the, the vastness of the earth and the universe. That's another thing we're talking about. But the system by which man is governed in the world today, you see, the system that by which it is governed has been instituted by people who are strategically placed to put a system in place that favors the devil. Let me repeat that. That, that. that Satan has strategically placed certain people within the system. Because the word world means system. The system that governs economics, system that governs agriculture, system that governs education, system that governs healthcare, system that governs uh, um, technology. All of these things, all of these systems that runs these sectors of society. See, there's a, everything has to be run by a system. You know? Everything has to be run by a mechanism, a system. So what the enemy has done, he has placed his people within the, the sectors of society to implement satanic systems. See, to implement satanic system in our schools. So young people in our schools could study any book they want to study, read any book they want to read, carry any book come to school they want to carry, except for the Bible. Except for the Bible, they are not allowed to bring Bibles into the schools of America. They could bring the Quran, they could bring any other religious book, but they cannot bring Bible into the schools of America. Because the devil has placed a system in place to ensure that anything has to do with God doesn't show up. I saw on the news some, some while back where this, these football players would bend down on their knees and pray to God before the game, during the game, after the game. And there are some people came about and said, we want that praying thing to stop. They're not disturbing anybody. They're not praying over the mic. They're not praying loud. Nobody cannot hear them. But just the thought of these men bowing their knees on the, on the, on the field and praying, somebody watching on television, somebody sitting up in the stand, don't like it. It's not bothering them. It's not hindering them, obstructing them. It's not preventing them from, from hearing or seeing anything. But that thing disturbed them. Because the devil does not want anything that has to do with God to be a part of the system. The system must be godless, ungodly, against God. So the, so, so the enemy is right now busily putting his system or his people in place to implement satanic system in various sectors of society. Now there are seven things I believe the Lord lay on my heart, seven different areas, seven different sectors of society. Seven different sectors of society that, uh, that I believe Satan is working. Of course, he's working in a lot more areas. But these, I believe, are the primary seven areas of society that Satan is mostly concerned about. Or he's actually actively placing his people to implement his system. Number one, government. Government. The devil is doing everything in his power to put his people in government. Peter said we should pray for those who are in authority over us that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life. We have to pray that God will place godly people in government. See, because whatever spirit controls you, when you go into power, you are going to implement what that spirit wants. So number one sector of society, I'm giving you seven sectors in society where the devil has infiltrated to, to implement or to place his people to implement satanic system. Number one in the government. And the purpose of him wanting to get a hold of the government, the government is where the laws are passed, where laws are changed, where the law that governs the land, the laws that governs the land can, comes from the government. The, co the congressmen and the senators with the president get together and pass laws. They pass the law and the president signs it. Satan wants to control government. 
We wrestle not against flesh and blood, blood, but against principalities and powers. We're not, we're not fighting human flesh, but we're fighting against principalities and powers, rulers of darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. Satan loves the high seat. He loves the leadership. Wherever there's leadership, there's power. So if he can control the leaders in the leadership, he can implement his ways in that system and have these leaders to pass laws that he wants to pass. So the first number one sector of society the devil wants to control are he's placing. He's placing his people, Antichrist disciples, he's, one, he's placing them in government for the purpose of passing laws, changing laws. That is in alignment with satanic ideology. Number two, Satan wants to place his satanic disciples in the area of education. The devil wants to place his people in the area of education. If he gets into education, education controls the mind. Education has to do with the mind. Education has to do with the mind. Don't think you go to college for three years, you didn't learn anything. You learn a lot. All them books they tell you to read and these tests that they tell you to do, you got to study for this and study for that. All while you're studying those books, it's affecting your thinking. That's why they make you study it. Even some of these books you study in college, you don't even want to read them. In your mind, while, while you're reading them, you say, oh my God, this is boring or this is just stupid or this is crazy. But they still force you to read it because they know that the mind doesn't forget what it sees. The mind is going to have it recorded there somewhere in the back of your head. And over a period of time, it breaks down your own mindset and reprogram you with what you have just read. Education is the controlling of the mind. Education is the framework of thought. See, it's a skeleton of thought. That's what education is. It's a skeleton of thought. So before the sinews and the, the flesh formulation of your own ideology, they give you the framework in the classroom. They give you the mold. So before you start making your own brick, come up with your own thought, they give you the mold. Education is the mold they give you in college. You go to college, you spend how many years you spend there, they're giving you a mold. So all whatever thought you come up with, it's still going to shape the way they want it to shape. Because education is a mold. Is very few people go through these universities and come out with themselves as they go in. Very few people goes into these universities, read all these books, listen to all these lectures, and come out with the way you went in. Born again, blood wash, fill up with the Holy Ghost. Very few people. Because all these years of study, reading all these books, listening to these lecturers, was for the purpose of deprogramming and reprogramming your mind. Satan is trying to place Antichrist disciples in various areas or sectors of society for the purpose of implementing satanic ideology. And that's what's going on right now. So we say there are seven primary areas, seven main sectors, seven main areas where the devil is trying to place his people. Number one is government, because that's where laws are passed. That's where laws are changed. That's where laws are implemented. Government. Second area, education. Why education? Controlling of the thought, controlling of the mind. Education gives you a mold. You, you come out of school with a mold. It doesn't matter what kind of material you put in the mold, it's going to come out shaping like the mold see a skeleton of a human body right no matter what you put on that human skeleton it's going to shape just like the skeleton so education is a framework that frames the way you view the world based on the based on who gave you the frame so if your professor doesn't believe in God, more likely, if you're not strong, you're going to come out not believing in God. If your professor believes that two men can marry, you're going to come out believing the same thing because he, his ideology frame your mind to think like him. So education is the controlling of the mind. Satan want to put 
Antichrist disciples in the area of education. And I want to say a little thing here for the parents who will be watching this video in the future. You better take strong involvement in the education of your children. Re revision, go over with them what they come home with from school. And ask them based on what this, this you study today, what's your view on it? How do you see? Do you believe it? Do you believe what the teacher was saying? Do you believe what this is saying? And challenge them and show them why it's right or why it's wrong. You have to be active with your young people. You really have to be. If not, one day, you're going to see them come home and they're not going to look like your children. They're gonna be, they're not, they, they won't be looking like your children anymore. They won't be talking like your children anymore. Their ideology is a million miles from yours. Their belief system is oppo opposing to yours. They don't even want to go to church with you no more. Because somebody has changed their mindset. Come on, parents. You got to be involved because we have heathens teaching our children. I saw a video recently where this man went to the to school with his camera because the teacher dressed up his son into, dre into a dress. He, the teacher dressed up his little boy into a dress and she did it two different times. And the little boy came home crying to his father. What on earth that has to do with the learning of a child? You send the kids there to learn to read, to write, and to do math. And this woman who is a satanic disciple, antichrist disciple, an agent of the devil, placed there strategically by Satan to carry out his purpose, to warp the minds of these children. Come on now. The devil does have his people in our classroom. Antichrist disciples, perverted reprobates. And they are there to mess with the minds of your children and to divert them from the way in which you trying to raise them in the fear of God. We, we have to believe and understand these things. It is happening right now as we speak. So, so is edu education is the controlling of the mind. Understand this. All right. The third thing is agriculture. You believe it or not, the enemy is interested in what you eat. Agriculture. And they are messing with the food supply right now as we speak. They're buying up farmlands. They're trying to change the kind of food that we eat and to tell us you can't eat animals anymore. You can't eat this anymore. You can't eat that anymore. And what they're doing is genetically altering the DNA of plants. They are genetically trying to grow foods into a lab, laboratory. They're selling these foods into the supermarket right now that they grow into labs. Because they are forcing you to stop eating animals. They're forcing you. No, you think about the millions of people in America that love eating their, their steak and love eating their ribs and whatever. And you're going to tell these people, says, we want you to stop eating that and eating this. These are people who are forcing their will on society. And they are now genetically growing foods into labs. What I'm teaching you this morning is not a joke thing. It's very serious. Why is it that the devil is interested in the food that we eat? Why? Because the truth of the matter is, your, the food that we eat has a lot to do with our, our body function and our mind's function. See? And the whole idea is to genetically alter not just the plants, not just the animal, but to genetically alter you and I as human beings. To mess with our DNA. Okay, if you start to, if you take a cell from an animal and then put chemicals on that cell and it grows into a chicken breast and it grows into a piece of steak, then there's a whole other thing going on there that you're not telling us. Because that's not the normal way in which God created that, that chicken breast to grow. You're doing something completely different from the natural order. So you have the natural order of God and then you have the order of man. And we are in it right now. We're not talking about something that's going to happen up the road. It's happening now. Next time you go to the supermarket, you look at the, the label on that meat that you're about to buy. Some of those meats are grown into a lab. Into a laboratory, it is grown. It is so real and look like the natural one 
that you can't tell the difference. See, so right now there is there is this attempt to to insert things into our body that that you wouldn't agree with if you really know what's going on. Why is it that the devil is after our food? Because you no, listen, listen, listen. Think about this. You think about this. If you study the history of hum, if human existence. Mankind always live near water source, a river, a spring, a lake, wherever there's fresh water, you always find human beings live nearby. Because first of all, man cannot live without water. So you use water to feed yourself, take care of yourself. You use water to take care of your animals and to, and to grow your food. There is a society that's being developed right now that the farmers we know it won't exist anymore. The farm, as you know it, won't exist anymore. Raising cattle, growing corn, growing rice, growing whatever. You, it won't exist the way it, it is now. They are going to bring all these things into a laboratory where they can genetically manipulate it, an orange, manipulate a plant, a fruit, a vegetable. They can genetically manipulate it, remove from it what they want to remove and put in it what they want to put in it. Which is going to have an adverse effect to our human bodies. It's happening right now. Why is it the devil want to place Antichrist people, Antichrist minded people, Antichrist disciples in the area of agriculture so he can manipulate our biology and also our psychology? It's happening now. So that's number three. Number four, in the area of health care. In the area of health care, the devil wants to place his people in the area of health care. For what reason? For biological manipulation. For the, for the purpose of biological manipulation. I've been encouraging people and telling them, go talk to your grandparents. Go talk to, talk to the old people of your, of your background, the people that you grew up with. Get some of these knowledge from them about the plants. What plants to boil, to drink for what? We have to get back some of these knowledge that our grandparents used to, used to have. No, seriously now. No, this is a serious thing. We really have to get back to some of, because some of these medication that they are working on to give to us is no good. No good. No good. In the area of healthcare, Satan wants to place his Antichrist disciples in the era of health care. Encourage women to abort their babies. All that kind of stuff. Because they're trying to lower the population. And that is the purpose of it all. They want to lower the population. The birth rate and the population. That's why they are pushing homosexuality. Because that will help to lower the birth rate. And on the pushing abortion, that will help to lower the birth rate because the whole idea they are saying, listen to, this, listen to the root of it. This is the root of it. They are saying that human beings is causing climate change, global warming, climate change. Human beings causing it. That's what they're saying. And the solution to, to it is to lower the, human, the, the growth of the human population. Lower the growth of human population. In Europe right now as we speak, of all the continents in the world, Europe have the lowest birth rate. And it's not nobody killing off their babies. It's them killing off their own babies over there in Europe. It's not the Chinese doing it. It's not the Indians doing it. It's not the, the black man in Africa doing it. It's the same Europeans killing off their own babies. And they have the lowest birth rate. But guess what? They want to lower the birth rate in Africa just as it's low in Europe. They want to lower it in, in Asia, in the Chinaman place, in the Indian man place, just as they have it lowered in Europe. See, the white man still have that superior mindset. He think that he must tell you what to do and how to live your life. And whatever he's doing to himself, he want to do worse than that to you. The reason, listen to this now, listen, listen to this. The reason why these things are happening is because they say that human beings cause climate change, global warming. That's what they say. Human beings, we causing it. 
And the solution is to get rid of a certain amount of human beings. There are too much human beings on the earth. So they are seriously going about doing it. And they are doing it in a very subtle way. Very subtle way. The lower the growth of human, uh, human population. Alright? So number one is in government. Satan trying to place Antichrist disciples in, in government. Place Antichrist disciples in education. Place Antichrist disciples in the area of agriculture. Place Antichrist disciples in the area of healthcare. Why on earth healthcare is so expensive? Why? Why healthcare is so expensive? Her healthcare has become a luxury. Healthcare does not have to be this expensive. They made it so that only some people can afford it. Because the whole idea is too much people is on earth and there's a certain percentage must die. Must die out. Mm -hmm. And these, these were philosophies and ideologies that was birthed in the womb of the European continent. We must understand what's going on. So we're talking about strategic places with, that the devil has placed Antichrist disciples. And I'm giving you seven areas in society where he has placed them. I gave you government, I gave you education, I gave you agriculture, I gave you health care. See, the, th the, the fifth one is technology. Antichrist disciples are in the area of technology. And technology has become a very dangerous thing now. Technology has become very, very dangerous. You, you women listening to me, when you're in your room, taking care of yourself and change, all that kind of stuff, be careful of the camera on your phone. You got to be careful, brothers and sisters. Be careful of the camera on your phone when you're by yourself taking care of yourself. Dressing yourself, all that stuff. Be careful of the camera and the microphone on your phone. When you buy a phone, they tell you, says, okay, allow them to have access to your camera. Allow them to have access to your microphone. You think they have allowed them to have access to your contacts. You think they're just asking you that question, asking you that just for nothing? And when you press allow, 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 because if you don't press allow, they will not allow you to use the phone. If you don't say yes, allow, they don't allow you to use the phone. So I am telling you now, when you have your phone with you, they, they are listening to you. They're listening, and every now and then, they turn on your camera. Why is this happening? Because this is happening as, a, listen this, is the foundation is being laid for when the Antichrist comes. They are putting in the technology in place. It's called an infrastructure. They're putting it in place, so when Antichrist fully comes, they'll be able to control every area of your life. It's not a joke. It's a dangerous thing for me to be preaching this, you know. You know this. Because they don't like this kind of exposure. But the Spirit stirred me up early this morning. I said, I should teach on this. I'm doing it. Antichrist disciples are being placed in the area of technology. Technology has become very dangerous. The moment you step out of your house, as a matter of fact, while you're in your house, you're on camera. Okay, if you have your cell phone with you in your house, you are, they have the potential to look at you, listen to you, anytime they want. Wherever your cell phone is, they can hear and see anytime they want. But the moment you step out of your house, there are cameras all over the place. You're on camera. This is not going to get no better. It's only going to get worse. See? It's only going to get worse. So they are antichrist disciples in the area of technology. Technology is going to become a nightmare for mankind. Technology will become a nightmare for mankind in the near future, even right now. There will be a day when the police don't have to come look for you. If the police want you, you're going to go look for them. You think I'm joking? Remember what I just said. The day is going to come. When the police will never have to come look for you anymore. When they want you, you will be gladly go look for them. 
Because first thing, they're going to remove cash. And money will become electronic. So if they want you, they, sh they shut off your money account on your app or on your phone. They turn off your account. You have no access to your money. None. When you get pay on your job, they send the money to your, to your electronic account. When you go to supermarket, you, you pick up your items and you cash them right away. You, you're going to cash them yourself right away. You scan. It's going to all be about scanning. So if the government wants to get your attention, they turn off your app. Turn off your money account on your, on your phone. You'd have no access to money. So whatever they want you to do, you gladly do it. The Bible says, man shall not be able to buy nor sell. That verse in the Bible is referring to technology. Technology in the last days are going to get so serious that human beings are going to lose their, their freedom and their independence. Satanic disciples in the Antichrist disciples in the area of technology. Antichrist disciples in the area of technology. I am giving you seven areas. Seven areas. Seven different sectors in the society where the devil are going to place Antichrist disciples. You need to send this video to everybody you know. This is going to happen. This is happening right now. This is not no two year up the road, one year up the road. This is happening right now. It's going to get worse. Seven areas in society. The devil right now is placing Antichrist disciples. He's putting them in place there to implement what he wants. So we say the fifth one is technology. We have two more to go. In the area of religion, Satan is placing Antichrist disciples in the area of religion. Why? Because the devil realized that man, man loved to worship. Man was born to worship. The main purpose of man is to worship God. Man was literally created to worship. That's, that's his main reason for being alive. is to worship God. So man have a natural thing in him that wants to worship. And what the devil has done, he has crept into religion. Religion, he has placed his own people in religion. To divert them. That's what the purpose of religion is to divert them from the living God to make you think that you're worshiping God when you're not you're worshiping something else other than God so so there are there are forces of darkness operating in the area of religion right now as we speak there are sincere people that sincerely pray to their God every day but they are not serving the true and the living God. And the enemy has deceived those minds and led them astray. The purpose of Antichrist disciples in religion, the reason why they are in religion, is to divert people. Divert you. Now the Bible says Ahab, the king of Israel, married to a woman called Jezebel. Ahab, king of Israel, married a woman called Jezebel. And the Bible said, that when she came over to live with Ahab in the palace, she brought 850 prophets of Baal with her. This woman brought 850 prophets. And when she came over, she began to destroy and kill the true prophets of God. The true prophets of Israel, she began to kill them off, getting rid of them, and send her prophets, 850 of them, all throughout the land of Israel, teaching the, the Israelites, about the foreign god called Baal. They begin to teach the children of Israel who knew only about Jehovah God. They start teaching them about Baal. This is a perfect example of satanic disciples and, 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 and satanic uh, disciples being, being placed. There were eight, listen to this, 850 prophets of Baal were placed in every town, every village, and every cities in Israel to teach the people about Baal. And at the same time, she passed a law that the prophets of God should be killed. 
Obadiah was one of those prophets that had to live into a cave. Elijah was one of those prophets that was alive during that time. Come on now. 850 prophets of Baal were strategically placed in every city, in every village, and in every town to teach the, the children of Israel about how to worship Baal. She was strategically diverting the minds of the people away from Jehovah, the true God, to the God of Baal. That's what the devil is doing now. That's, this is why we see the name Jezebel is mentioned in the, in the book of Revelation. You wonder why is this woman's name being mentioned in the book of Revelation? Why? Because the same spirit that was in her is going to rise up again in the last days. Satan, as we speak right now, is placing his people in the area of religion. He's putting them in the church. Different parts, different places, different areas, different sectors of church life. He's placing his people to divert the people from worshiping God to the worship of Baal. Worship of, of, of idols, worship of the wrong thing. Jesus said something about this. He said, in the last days, many false prophets shall rise. That's what he says. Many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Now, the opposite of the word many is few. So if there's many false prophets in the last days, the, 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 the adverse of that is the real prophets are few. You can't have many false prophets and have many good true prophets. The word many can be used on the two of them. It's only Many can only be used to, to describe one set of them. And Jesus already said many false prophets shall rise. Many false prophets shall rise. So the, the, opposite, the, 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 the word opposite to many is few. The opposite word to many is few. So the real prophets are few. That's why the TV is full of them. Everybody is a prophet now. Everybody is a prophet. Because Jesus said it, many. So the, 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 most of those who you bump into who call themselves prophet, most of them are false. If not all of them. Most of them is false. Mm -hmm. I know this is tough, but I got to tell you. I got to give it to you. I got to tell you as the Spirit tells me to tell you. Satan is strategically placing his Antichrist disciples in, in strategic areas of society. He's strategically placing them in strategical area of society to control the society. Just like what Jezebel did. Imagine you marry a man. She's a woman. She, she married this king of Israel called Ahab. Her father is also a king, you know. Jezebel was a princess. Her daddy was a Zidonian king. So she understand about this lifestyle of, you know, royalty. She grew up in it. She born into it. And when she's coming to Israel to come live with her husband that she just married, she brought 850 men with her who were prophets of Baal. Now, let me say this to you. There's no woman... <laughs> If you, you could ever bring no man come with you into my life. Now I'm going to work. Ahab was a weak man. Very weak. Because how are you going to marry a woman and the woman is coming to live with you and she has 850 men with her? Come on now. Come on now. You got to correct that right away. Same day. No, no, same day we're going to correct that. But Ahab was a very weak man. He was all about the material. And she, he left the spiritual part to... Jezebel. And Jezebel hated God. You must understand what I'm trying to tell you. There is a spirit rising up in people today that make them hate God. Even right there in Jamaica. It used to be a God-fearing, God-loving place. People today hate God. They hate God. Jezebel hate God. She did. Jezebel hate God with a passion. And she's trying to get rid of God out of the land. She want to get rid of God. So she brought her men 
to come and teach the children of Israel how to worship Baal. That's what's going on today. Satan is sneaking his people, anti-Christ disciples, in various churches, church organizations, to, to remove the true worship of God and to bring something new. That's what's going on today. Antichrist disciples, they are at work. So in the era of religion, he's placing people. Now watch this, verse number seven. I'm giving you seven areas that the devil is placing Antichrist disciples. Number seven, in the economy. In the economy to control finance. Satan is placing people strategically in the area of the economy. Let me tell you this. Money is the currency of life, of natural life on earth. Money is the currency, is the fuel for life on earth, for natural life on earth, for man's needs and wants. Money is the fuel. Money is the fuel for natural existence on earth. So listen to this now. The devil understands this. In every country of the world, there is a monetary system. There's a financial system. There is an economy. When you say economy, you're talking about the whole, the whole aspect of finances, uh, how it is spent, how it is collected, how it is redistributed, etc., etc. The economy on a whole, buying and selling and money passing hands, changing hands. The economy. Satan wants to control the economy. See, because whoever controls the economy controls goods and services. You control goods and services. You can determine who get what and who don't get what. The economy. Satan is involved in the economy. I am telling you this. It's not about, listen, most time when people teach and preach about anything has to do with the devil, they talk about obia and demons and that kind of stuff. I didn't list none of that here. You know why? Because this is deeper than that. Devils and demons and this and that, that stuff. Those things were dealt with on the cross when Jesus shed his blood. All of it was came up under the shed blood of Jesus. But I'm telling you, the enemy is, is more tactical, tactical than we think. He works deeper than we think. In the economy, when Antichrist comes, the Bible says, No man shall be able to buy nor sell. The Bible says he shall control commerce in the book of Daniel. He shall control commerce. You hear me? He will control co commerce. Buying and selling. He going to control that. Because once you're able to control buying and selling, you control the people. Because the people has to eat. The people has to live. The people has to, has to function. And they're going to need an economy to function. So he said, the Bible said they're going to be a mark. The Bible said there shall be a, a mark, right? A number and a mark that shall be given out. A number and a mark. The number is 666. The mark, we don't know what the mark exactly is going to be. But there will be a mark, something like a tattoo. Something tattooed into the body. I don't know exactly what it looks like, but the Bible speaks of a number. And it tells you what the numbers are, 666. And then there's a mark, and the Bible talks about the number of his name. Right? The Bible talks about the image, the beast, and the false prophet. Is actually three of them that will be in operation. But there's one main one. The image, the Antichrist will make an image of himself, like a statue of himself. You understand this? He's going to have a statue of himself. And then you have him, the person, and then you have the false prophet. So it's three of them, three, three different representations of them that will be functioning at that time. And the economy is the main thing he's going to control. The Bible said, uh, uh, through peace he shall cause many to prosper. Through peace he shall cause many to prosper. So what the scripture is saying, the first half of his, of his, of his coming, while the first seven years, half of the first seven years, he will bring prosperity in the land. The Bible said, through craft, he shall cause many to prosper. That's the first three and a half years. But the last three and a half years is when he's going to reveal himself in the temple in Jerusalem and demand that the world worship him. And the Jews will be the first one to turn against him. And when this happens, he turns against the Jews and the Armageddon war starts. 